The table below shows chemical compounds that cannot be mixed without causing dangerous reactions. Construct a graph that could be used to facilitate the scheduling of disposal containers for the compounds. Use vertex coloring to find the least amount of containers needed, i.e. chromatic number. So the first thing we're going to do is construct a graph that shows which compounds cannot be mixed together. So anything with an X indicates that you cannot put those together. So the first thing I'll do is just list out all of the different compounds, which there's five of them, A, B, C, D, and E. Here the graph doesn't need to look pretty, just put them down somewhere. And we're going to be coloring them, so I'm going to leave open circles there for each one. So A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so from the graph, we're going to connect two compounds that cannot be mixed together, because essentially what we're going to do is use vertex coloring, which means that any two letters that are connected have to be different colors, which means that the compound will go into different containers. So anything with an X, we're going to connect. So looking at A, we have connections between B, D, and E. So from A, I'm going to go to B and D and E. Okay, B goes to A, C, and E. Okay, I already got the A connection, so C. Now, just because I'm crossing over the edges doesn't mean I'm causing new vertices. I'm just crossing over. So C and B also goes to E. Okay, C goes to B and D. So C already has the B, so then C to D. D goes to A and C. Already got it. And E goes to A and B. Already got it. So now what we're going to do at this point is color the vertices so that no two vertices that have an adjoining edge are the same color. doesn't matter where you start, but I'm going to recommend you start at the edge or the vertex that has the most edges coming out of it. So it looks like A and B are tied for that. So I'm just going to start with A. I'm just going to give it a color. I'm going to use blue. So this will be color number one. Okay, now you don't have to go in alphabetical order. We're just going to look to see what needs to be different colors. So next to the A, I have the B. So A and B have to be two different colors, so I'm going to use a different one. Maybe I'll use color 2 and call it green. A and D also need to be different colors. D is not a problem with B, so it's okay if I use 2 again. Because B and D can be in the same container. Okay, A to E have to be two different colors, but E has a problem with B, so I can't use two, so I'm going to go to three. Okay, so at this point, we need at least three containers. Let's see if we need four. So looking at C, C has a problem with B and D, which are both color two. So I'm going to use one. I could have used three, but there's absolutely no reason to use four because I can use one or three. I'm going to use one. Okay, so there we have it. All the vertices have been colored, and two vertices that are connected with an edge are two different colors. So we have three colors that we needed, so that means our chromatic number. Chromatic number is just the least amount of colors you need. So the chromatic number is three. And what that stands for is that we're going to need three containers. Okay, so if you take a look at the way we have it, we're going to have A and C in one container. And our second container is going to be B and D. And our third container is just going to be E. Okay. 